So we started off this chapter um, by talking about the monomers, monosaccharides, and the polymers, um, polysaccharides that we see in carbohydrates. And so on our next page, we're going to start to look in a little bit more detail at both of those. And we'll just get a little more detailed and a little more detailed throughout the day. Um, as usual, you've got terms over here to give you the vocabulary for some of the things that we're looking at on the page. So on this page, we're going to kind of look at examples of a monomer and a polymer to help us understand in a bit more detail our carbohydrates. Um, as an example, we're looking here at glucose. And we have a molecule similar to glucose um, that I'll just pop over here as well. Um, so when we talk about glucose, um, some things that we notice on this structure, some of these things we heard already today, um, is that it contains many hydroxyls, and you can see those on the molecule, so I actually have five of them. Remember, those say, wow, I'm polar. Um, it also has a new functional group for us. So new functional group is going to be this O carbon OH. And if I can see that on my model, the red is oxygen. So there's an oxygen in the ring, and then a carbon, and then an OH. So that's what I'm looking at here. Um, so we say that our monosaccharides contain a functional group called a hemiacetal or a half acetal um, functional group. Um, again, like I said, we see all those OHs, which mean that this monomer and others are polar and also water soluble. And so just to illustrate that water solubility for you, here is some table sugar. And if I add some water to that, um, all of those hydroxyls are going to hydrogen bond with the water. And you can see that almost instantaneously this is going back to transparent. There's a bit of sugar there at the bottom. Okay, that's my monomers. In contrast, over on the other side in a moment, while we've got this stuff out here, this polymer, the polymer is too big to fully dissolve in water. So it'll attract water, but it won't dissolve. So I have some flour here. Flour is a long polysaccharide. Can you see the difference? So the flour will kind of spread out throughout the water, but it doesn't dissolve. And I can tell it's not dissolving because it's cloudy. Um, so my polymers are too big to dissolve, but my monomers definitely dissolve very well. Um, so continuing on with some of these um, functions and reactions, um, the main thing that we're going to do with our monomers is use them for energy, so ATP, or we can um, connect them to store energy. And that would be what we do with our big polymers over here. So taking a look at the polymer side of things, um, these have many units. And what I mean by many units is hundreds to thousands of individual glucoses connected into these huge molecules. Okay, so these are gigantic. So we're looking at, for example, glycogen. Um, glycogen also contains many OHs. Um, but it contains, instead of hemiacetals, it contains mainly acetal functional groups, which we'll see in more detail later in the lecture. Um, and somewhat polar because of all of those hydroxyls, so somewhat polar. Um, so it can attract water. But as we saw here, it can't dissolve um, because it's too big. So it's too large to be water soluble. Okay. Um, key functions. These are these polymers are going to be used to store sugar. Um, glycogen in particular will store sugar in animal liver and muscles. And others like especially in plants, um, but others can provide structure. And that would be like cellulose in plants. Um, key reactions that we're going to see, um, if we're building one of these polysaccharides, we would assemble those um, by a reaction that we glimpsed back in chapter 13, which was a condensation reaction. 
And then if we want to break them apart, um, because say we need to study chemistry, um, then we're going to have hydrolysis reactions. And those hydrolysis reactions um, are going to break them apart. So that gives us a couple of examples. Um, and then we're going to dive deeper into monomers now.